correct. Um, but, you know, here's the problem I have. I mean, if the church fathers were, of course, I guess we disagree about this, but if the church fathers were at least somewhat inconsistent in their grasp of the central doctrine of the gospel justification, um, and then how, how, how is it that the church, we can rely on the church to have picked out the right 27 books uh, of the canon? I mean, it looks, it looks like you have to rely on the authority of the church to pick out that canon. Yeah, see, I, if you're I, going to do that, then then you have to follow the church's authority and understanding those books as well. See, I don't think that follows be, because the argument only works for the New Testament, doesn't work for the Old Testament. Nobody accepts the Old Testament canon in that way. Uh, as we as we look, for example, no. at well, it's true. I mean, think about okay. So here here the here the argument first. So if you look at if you look at the first century, generally there was a canon of the New Testament. Now there's this whole cancel, Council of Gemini and whether that was actually even a council or not is kind of a debated point. Right. But, but generally, Jews had, yes, right? There was an accepted tradition of what books were in scripture. Now we can do things like debate the apocryphal text. And I think that issue is actually not clear either way, personally. Um, uh, but wait, I mean, the Deuterocanonical uh, books were part of the Septuagint. They were part of the Septuagint, but they were not part yeah. of the Masoretic text. Now, but let, let's- The church was using the Septuagint, I think. Isn't that pretty clear? Well, there, there are, there is a diverse opinion from the fathers on those particular books. So we do have a number of different canonical compilations. You know, uh, for example, uh, Athanasius does not include the deuterocanonical books. Mm -hmm. So it's not that clear. Okay, and I'm still convinced yeah. it's not that clear. I wouldn't split the church over whether you have th those deuterocanonical books or not. Personally, Lutheran Bibles used to all have them. So did Anglican ones. You know, yeah, so James. Yes, Adam. and I have, you know, make an argument for the Apocrypha, that has, that's fine, okay. But, but the point is either, whatever view of that you take, you have to come to a perspective by the first, in the first century that somehow God made it clear which books were the Old Testament. And we accept that without then accepting all of the interpretive traditions of the rabbis because Jesus himself criticizes those. You see, th so the argument- I'm, I'm confused because I thought you just got through saying there wasn't a consensus in the church over those books until much later. Okay, so there are, by the time you get to the first century, there are, there's, there are two canons and, and we can get debate about whether it's the Masoretic canon or the, Sep the Septuagint, okay? I'm setting that, that particular part of the debate aside at the no, moment. I don't, I don't think you can. So, I mean, that, that, that's another example of, of the church's authority really in, in deciding which of those canons was correct. So is it, is it your position then that no one in the first century had an idea of what the Old Testament canon was? Well, if you were, if um, you were in the first century, could you know what the Old Testament canon was? That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, certainly you knew that certain books were in the canon for sure. Because, um, I mean, whichever of those two you take as authoritative, whichever yeah. of those two traditions, you have to base, I mean, if, if you're going to make the argument that the only way that you know what books are in the Bible is through the authoritative tradition that gave us that list of books, that would have been the Pharisaical tradition, not uh, because we know that the Pharisees had the, the larger canon. And we accept that without also accepting the other things that the Pharisees said were authoritative within their tradition. Right. Right. Yeah. So I'm, but I, but I'm not appealing to the Pharisaical tradition here at all. I don't think, but, no, rather, no, to, you're... but rather to what the first century church and the later church does. No, you're not appealing to the Pharisaical tradition. My point though, is that in the context of the old Testament, everyone is okay accepting the tradition that is the books of the canon of the old Testament without then saying that there is that the the major teachings within that tradition were passed down authoritatively in other areas. I see. And so I what see. I'm saying is the way that we accept the New Testament is exactly the same way that we accept the Old Testament, is that we do trust that God providentially preserves the books of the canon, but that it doesn't then give us uh, the grounds for saying that there is a magisterial authority that can give us extra biblical traditions outside of that. I see. No, it seems to me idea. to be the way that the Old Testament works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, okay. That seems reasonable. Uh, do you mind?